Hey, what's up? My name is Ange. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi. I am Ange. I love to read and now I make YouTube videos about it. Today we are going to be talking about all of the books that I read in July and all of the books that I really, really want to read in August. <music> So I don't have all the physical ones, but I have them like in order and I'll just read them off of Goodreads. So starting off in the month, I read Tampa by Alyssa Nutting. So obviously that is a very like, it's a very difficult book. If you know what that book is about, I don't really want to say it, but I did read My Dark Vanessa a couple months ago and it was one of those books where it's just so difficult to read if you want to go research it and read what it's about i don't really want to go too in depth about it although i did rate it i rated it three stars now the book was insane to read but it was very hard to get through because a lot of the time i was just like i had to keep closing it and being like i can't i physically can't read it it's making me sick but it was a well-written book but i'm very very upset about the ending and i just wish that it had gone differently i wanted like justice to be served for that situation and i don't feel like it was next i reread the summer i turned pretty trilogy in preparation for season two my heart can't handle it i love it so much if you don't know what summer i turned pretty series is it is now a tv show i love it not the biggest fan of season two if i'll be honest but season one i loved it and i also love the books they're such a cute easy summer read it only took like I think about three hours to get through each book but it was really really good belly is lived for the summertime because it means all her favorite things swimming the beach and the fisher boys conrad and jeremiah she has spent every summer with them at cousin's beach for as long as she can remember she's always been in love with conrad and finally one summer it feels like he might have feelings for her too but it turns out so does jeremiah as the summers go on belly has to choose between two brothers who love her as she comes to the realization that she will have to break one of their hearts for the first time, all three Summer's novels are in our collection, including The Summer I Turn Pretty, It's Not Summer Without You, and We'll Always Have Summer. My new Yeti cup with their new color. Love it. It was a reread. I reread it last summer in preparation for season one, and I think I read it for the first time two summers before that or summer before that. thought it was cute. Don't realize how different the show and the books are until you actually read the books and then watch the show immediately after. But I really enjoyed it. I thought it was cute. It's very... It's a very easy light read. Next, I read Fuel the Fire by Christian Beccarucci. This is book number three in the Callaway Sisters series, but I was reading it in the order with the Addicted and Callaway Sisters series intertwined. It is about Connor and Rose, and it is their, I think it was, I believe it was their second book. Connor and Rose came up with this plan to stop a new story going out about Moffy, which is Lily and Lowe's son. And in order to do that, they have to turn the paparazzi onto them to keep the stories about the children out of the light and keep the children safe and just away from the paparazzi. So they came up with this just elaborate plan to do so. And you see throughout the book that they're trying to turn all the attention on them, but is it really what is best for the family as a whole? I rated this one five stars for Connor and Rose always. They're my favorite. Love Connor. Love, love, love Rose. I really love the story. It took me a really long time to get through. I don't know why, but this month was just like not a really good reading month for me. So maybe that's why it took me like a little bit longer than normal, but I really did love this book and I love the series. Right now I am on long way down, which you'll see in my August CBR. So it is almost over. I'm really upset about that, but we're almost there. And finally in July, I read Float by Kate Mercant. This was my July book club read with Jess and Cam. So if you did not see that video, this book is about a heartful summer read for fans of Sarah Dessen and Jenny Han about holding on and letting go. So Waverly Lyons has been caught in the middle of her parents' divorce for as long as she can remember. This summer, the battle rages over who she'll spend her vacation with. And when Waverly's options are shot down, it's bye-bye Fairbanks, Alaska, and hello to Holden, Florida to stay with her aunt. Coming from the tundra of the north, the beach culture isn't exactly Waverly's forte. The sun may just be her mortal enemy and her vibe is decidedly not chill. To top it off, her ability to swim is non-existent. Enter Blake, the super hot boy next door. Charming and sweet, he welcomes Waverly into his circle. For the first time in her life, Waverly has friends, a social life, and soon enough, feelings for Blake. As the two grow closer, Waverly's fortunes begin to look up, but every summer must come to an end, and letting go is hardest when you're finally found where you belong. I rated this one three stars. Uh, I thought it was really cute, but you really see the Wattpad layout and the Wattpad feel to it. Again, we read it for our July book club read. I did think it was cute. I didn't think it was, like, super crazy amazing. If you would like to see our in-depth 
thoughts on this book please go check out that video that includes my reactions cam's reactions and jess's reactions our thoughts or feelings we have a big open discussion about it so if you want to go see that check it out i don't know i thought it was cute it was very wow patty so i was kind of like iffy it was it was cute it was just i think a little bit too young for me now getting into all of the books that i want to read in august starting off we have a very hefty list here i want to read on my kindle this is our August book club read when my Kindle turns on. Is Every Last Secret by A.R. Tour. Welcome to the neighborhood. Watch your husband, watch your friends, and watch your back. Kat Winthrop has worked hard to get what she has a gorgeous home, social standing, and William, her successful, handsome husband. Then a friendly new couple moves into the estate next door. While cautious, a good neighbor like Kat greets them with open arms and warm hospitality. Nina Ryder is not a fellow lady of leisure, a life coach with off the rack dresses, personal issues, and a husband who hasn't delivered. She's anxious to move up in the world. This beautiful new town is a step in the right direction. It's also making Nina aware of what she doesn't have, namely William. When Nina's infatuation escalates into obsession, it's just a matter of eliminating a few obstacles to get to the life that she wants, the life next door. As Nina's secret fixation grows, so does her friendship with Kat, but beneath their cordial interactions is a wealth of temptation, secrets, and toxic jealousy. I did start this one. I like it a lot. It's very interesting. I'm only on like chapter three. I was reading it a little bit at the beach yesterday when I was there, but I really do like it. I'm so excited to see Cam and Jess's thoughts on that one just because that is a very very interesting one and it's different from what we have read so i'm excited to see that and i like the mystery like thriller books like i'm really into that so i'm excited to see how this one turns out next in august i want to finish reading long way down by krista and becca ritchie this is daisy and reich's final book and then i have some kind of perfect and i'm done with the addicted calloway sister series and then obviously I will be reading uh, the Like Us series and I do have the Bad Reputation duet that I'll be reading after some kind of perfect. But for right now in August, I'm gonna be reading Long Way Down. With a seven year age difference, Reich and Daisy have faced an uphill battle in the eyes of the world and their families. Known as the most adventurous, fast paced couple, their next step has always been elusive to the rabid media. Behind the scenes, heartbreaking troubles continue to test Daisy and Reich's resilience and shape their future together. They promise to never slow down, to never compromise who they are, to never abandon their love for each other. Preserving their happiness also means adding more risks, ones that Connor Coble wouldn't even take. As a professional free solo climber, Reich is no stranger to risk, but his next step with Daisy wages more than his health. Their lives on the line, Reich and Daisy head towards the vast, wild unknown in this epic final conclusion to the Addicted series. So I am very, very excited to this one i can't believe i'm almost done but this is a big book like right now at least here oh <laughs> i have my daisy and rick bookmark i love these bookmarks i'll link green gable shop down below but i love those bookmarks so i'm a little bit into it it's a hefty hefty book but so far i am loving it i love the little snippets that i get with everybody and the kids growing up like it's just it's so cute i'm so happy now when i am filming this video i did already finish happy place by emily henry but that reading vlog is coming out at the end of the month so if you are interested in seeing that that does come out i think it's the last week of august that wednesday is when this comes out so keep an eye out for that but this one Think of your happy place. Mary and Wynn have been the perfect couple since they met in college. They go together like salt and pepper, honey and tea, lobster and rolls. Except now, for reasons they're still not discussing, they don't. They broke up five months ago and still haven't told their best friends, which is how they find themselves sharing a bedroom at the main cottage that has been their friend's group yearly getaway for the last decade. Their annual respite for the world, where one vibrant, blissful week they leave behind their daily lives, have copious amounts of cheese, wine, and seafood, and soak up the salty coastal air with the people who understand them most. Only this year, Harriet and Wynn are lying through their teeth while trying not to notice how desperately they still want each other, because the cottage is for sale and this is the last week they'll all have together in this place. They can't stand to break their friends' hearts, and so they'll play their parts. Harriet will be the driven surgical resident who never starts a fight, and Wynn will be the laid-back charmer who never lets the crack show. It's a flawless plan, if you look at it from a great distance and through a pair of sunscreen smeared sunglasses after years of being in love how hard can it be to fake it for one week in front of those who love you most so i did already read this one for august because it is august 6th when i am filming this but check out the last week of august that video if you're interested <laughs> Next, I'm going to be reading It Happened One Summer and Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. So, trying to get through all my summer books before the summer is over because we are transitioning into the fall books in September and I'm so excited. So starting off, I will just read It Happened One Summer first. This one follows Piper Bellinger in a fashion... I don't know how to say the name. I'm really bad at names. Piper 
is fashionable and influential and her reputation as a wild child means the paparazzi are constantly on her heels. When too much champagne and an out of control rooftop party land Piper in the slammer, her stepfather decides enough is enough. So he cuts her off and sends her and her sister to learn some responsibility running their late father's dive bar in Westport, Washington. Piper hasn't even been hasn't even been in Westport five minutes when she meets big bearded sea captain Brendan. Taggart? who thinks she won't last a week outside of Beverly Hills. So what if Piper can't do math and the idea of sleeping in a shabby apartment with bunk beds give her hives? How bad could they be? She's determined to show her stepfather and the hot, grumpy local that she's more than just a pretty face. Except it's a small town, and everywhere she turns, she t bumps into Brendan. The fun-loving socialite and the gruff fisherman are polar opposites, but there's an undeniable attraction simmering between them. Piper doesn't want any distractions, especially feelings for a man who sails off into the sunset for weeks at a time. Yet as she reconnects with her past and begins to feel at home in Westport, Piper starts to wonder if the cold, glamorous life she knew is what she truly wants. LA is calling her name, but Brendan and the town full of memories may have already caught her heart. I'm excited for this one. I think it'll be cute, like easy, fast-paced read, so I'm excited for that. Yeah, the font is super big. So I'm excited. This will be like a really good palette cleanser, these two, after Long Way Down and that mystery. So I'm reading Long Way Down and Every Last Secret at the same time. So just kind of like I'm reading one on my Kindle and one as the physical copy. And the audiobook, I'm also listening to Long Way Down just to get through it because it's so big. And I have a lot more of this month. But I think that these will be really good palette cleansers because they seem fast paced and easy and again with that big font. So I'm excited for these two also this month. Editing and realizing that I never even read the back of Hook, Line, and Sinker. I do not know why, but I didn't. But here we go. If you if you want to know what it is about, I will read the back real quick for you. So the back of Hook, Line, and Sinker says, King Crab Fisherman Fox Thornton has a reputation as a sexy, carefree flirt. Everyone knows he's a guaranteed good time in bed and out, and that's exactly how he prefers it. Until he meets Hannah Bellinger, or however you say the last name. She's immune to his charming good looks, but she seems to enjoy his personality and wants to be friends. Bizarre. But he likes her too much to risk a fling, so platonic pals it is. Now Hannah's in town for work, crashing in Fox's spare bedroom. She knows he's a notorious ladies' man, but they're definitely just friends. In fact, she's nursing a hopeless crush on a colleague, and Fox is just the person to help with her lackluster love life. Armed with a few tips from Westport's resident Casanova, Hannah sets out to catch her co-worker's eye, yet the more time she spends with Fox, the more she wants him instead. As the last line between friendship and flirtation begins to blur, Hannah can't deny she loves everything about Fox, but she refuses to be another notch on his bedpost. Living with his best friend should have been easy, except now she's walking around in a towel and sleeping right across the hall, and Fox is fantasizing about waking up next to her for the rest of his life, and man overboard, he's fallen for her hook, line, and sinker. Helping her flirt with another guy is pure torture, but maybe if Fox can tackle his inner demons and show Hannah he's all in, she'll choose him instead. Next, I want to read One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I know that. I think it's a movie right is the movie or it's a show i don't remember but i think it is coming out soon if not already out oh my gosh my phone is so hot it's really hot out here but anyway the movie show whatever is coming out soon and i really want to get to this before i see that so in her 20s emma blair marries her high school sweetheart jesse they build a life for themselves far away from the expectations of their parents and the people of their hometown in massachusetts they travel the world together. Emma is a freelance writer. Jesse is a production assistant on nature documentaries, living life to the fullest and seizing every opportunity for adventure. On their first wedding anniversary, Jesse is on assignment in the in the something islands when his helicopter goes missing over the Pacific. Just like that, Jesse is gone forever. Emma quits her job and moves home in an effort to put her life back together. Years later, now in her 30s, Emma runs into an old friend Sam and finds herself falling in love again. When Emma and Sam get engaged, it feels like Emma's second chance at happiness. That is, until Jesse is found. He's alive, and he's been trying to come home for her, come home to her after all these years. Emma now is a husband and a fiancé, but who is her one true love, and what does it even mean to love truly? Emma knows she has to listen to her heart. She's just not sure what it's saying. I'm super excited for this one. I can't wait to read this one because I heard that it's, one, amazing, but two, the fact that the movie slash show is coming out, I really need to get to this first before that comes out, so I'm really excited for this, and I will get to this I will get to this book this month, whether I can or not. Oh, my mom's home. Hi. Why is this whole family walking? My neighborhood. I've been here for the 19 years. 19 years, I tell you. These new people and their their vacation homes. Right, Ma? Yeah. 
Yeah, what I said. And finally this month, yes. And finally this month, I do want to get to the Five Star Weekend by Ellen Hildebrand. I did want to get to this last month, but unfortunately I did not get to it. So because I was like about 30 pages in, I did take my bookmark out and I will reread it for, because I don't even remember. But, oh, that's so pretty. Oh, I love that. Hollis's Shaw's life seems pretty picture perfect. She's the creator of the popular food blog, Hungry with Hollis, and is married to Matthew, a dreamy heart surgeon. But after she and Matthew get into a heated argument Wednesday morning, he leaves her at the airport and is killed in a car accident. The cracks in Hollis's perfect life, her strained marriage, and her complicated relationship with her daughter Caroline grow deeper. So when Hollis hears about this, hears about something called a five-star weekend, one woman organizes a trip for her best friend from each phase of her life, her teenage years, her 20s, her 30s, and midlife. She decides to host her very own five-star weekend on Nantucket. But her weekend doesn't turn out to be a joyful Hallmark movie. The husband of Hollis's childhood friend Tatum arranges for Hollis's first love, Jack Finnegan, to spend time with them, stirring up old feelings. So meanwhile, Tatum is forced to play nice with abrasive and elitist Drew Ann, Hollis's best friend from UNC Chapel Hill. Drew Ann's career as a prominent Chicago sports agent is in jeopardy after her comments about a client's mental health issues are misconstrued online. Brooke, Hollis is from her 30s, has just discovered that her husband is having an inappropriate relationship with a woman at work again. And then there's Gigi, a stranger to everyone, including even Hollis, who reached out to Hollis on her blog. And Gigi embodies an unusual grace and, as it happens, has very many secrets. The Five Star Weekend is a surprising, captivating story about friendship, love, and self-discovery set on Nantucket. It will be a weekend like no other. So I'm very excited for that one. I did hear good things. I just, I just didn't get to it last month. I had other priorities and honestly it's very low on the priority in august as well so we'll see what i get to thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it and i'll see you all next time bye